the gruesome discovery of body parts at Kalang Riverside Park. The upper and lower torso are believed to belong to a woman. Police are still searching for the missing head and legs. Dubbed by Singapore media as the case of the cut-up China girl, the lower and upper torso of 22-year-old Chinese national Liu Hongmei are found dismembered at an inner city waterway. Within 24 hours, police charge her supervisor and lover, 50-year-old Leong Tzu Chor, with her murder. At Leong's unit, investigators discover critical evidence of the crime. Newspaper and plastic bags, similar to those found on Liu's body. And a towel, which police suspect may be the murder weapon. Forensic scientists from the Health Sciences Authority begin to process the evidence from the crime scene. They start with the sample retrieved from the toilet bowl. Using a procedure known as Kasselmeyer test, they confirm the droplet is blood. DNA specialists then compare the DNA profile of the blood sample with that of the victim's body parts. They match. This places the dismemberment in Leong's bathroom. As forensic teams continue processing the evidence collected, the autopsy of Liu's upper and lower torso fails to reveal any signs of a fatal injury. The recovery of the rest of Liu's body is now imperative to prove the cause of death. Because the neck had been cut relatively low down near the shoulders, it meant that probably most of the neck was still with the head. The examination of the neck really would not be complete uh, if the, the head was not found. Leong maintains he killed Liu for love as part of a suicide pact that she initiated. He says he strangled her in his bedroom with a towel. Shocked after seeing her lifeless body, he backed out of killing himself. Desperate to clean up any traces before his family's return, he rushed to dispose of her body. He claims he dismembered her body in the bathroom using a kitchen cleaver before disposing of her upper and lower torsos at the waters of Carlung Park near his home. He also tells police that he dumped Liu's head and shins in the Singapore River near a popular tourist spot. Investigators immediately start searching the waterways in an attempt to retrieve Liu's missing body parts. We got the assistance of the, the Met Services and uh, MPA, uh, Maritime Port Authority, to help us, to, to, to tell us uh, the wind speed, the condition of the Singapore River. If I threw something here, most probably where would, would, would it end up? The rate of water flow in the Singapore River is slow. A female human head weighs about four kilograms. Police believe the body parts did not travel far from where Leong dumped them. What we were worried of is if the head and the shins were, which were wrapped in plastic bags would have floated. Um, it will be taken away by the cleaners. Investigators learn that the Singapore River is cleaned every two days. Rubbish collected from the river is dispatched to the main incineration plant in western Singapore. So uh, that afternoon, that was the third day, um, where we rushed to the incineration plant and stench of, of the, the, the rubbish was unbearable. Yeah, but uh, th there was a job to do. We had to do it and we did it. Facing investigators is three tons of rotting rubbish. Armed with shovels and face masks, Inspector Lim and his team begin the back-breaking work. They painstakingly sift and open up every trash bag from the rubbish pile. As we, we dug into the rubbish, I think our hopes of uh, locating the head and the um, shins uh, went dimmer, went dimmer, because we couldn't seem to find anything. 
the team works into the night with no sign of Liu Hong Mei's body. Then they make an unusual breakthrough. Towards the end of the rubbish, um, there was this distinctive smell. If you know the smell of decomposition, you will never forget it. First time in my life, I was happy to smell the decomposition. Police rally and begin to concentrate their efforts in that area. Finally, after almost eight hours of intensive digging, investigators recover Liu's head and shins. Because of the time spent in the water, the body parts have suffered massive decomposition. The head itself showed no evidence of uh, blunt force being applied to the head. The rest of the neck was still actually present and um, I dissected the rest of the neck uh, that was still with the head. Uh, unfortunately, there were, there were no significant injuries detected because a lot of the skin on the neck that was with the head was decomposed and had slipped off. Although they've been cut, there's no firm evidence of strangulation. However, there are some types of strangulation uh, which do not leave any marks to the neck. Uh, and the best example is actually when somebody is strangled with a piece of broad fabric, like a towel. The brain, unfortunately, was very severely decomposed. It had actually almost liquefied into just greenish uh, brain tissue. The decomposition is so advanced that visual identification is not possible. But a smile from the grave shows them the way. One of the things that I noticed on examination was that one of the upper teeth was malformed and uh, I had asked the police whether or not it was possible to get a photograph showing the deceased person smiling so that we could compare this photograph with the teeth. The photograph actually did show this malformed tooth and just based on this uh, malformed tooth uh, I was actually able to say that the head did belong to the victim. Investigators discover a clue that makes them seriously doubt Leong's motive for killing Liu was love. My colleagues actually found out that Liu Hongmei uh, had lodged a report on the 14th of June 2005 stating that she had lost her ATM card, her USB ATM card, and uh, unauthorized withdrawal was made. Police obtain Liu's bank records and find that more than $2,000 was withdrawn two days before her murder. They review CCTV footage of each of the transactions. A man is seen at each withdrawal. Detectives believe that he is Leong Tzu Chor. At the back of our minds, we were thinking, could the murder be a result of the theft? We just had a suspicion that it could be linked. But the case takes a dramatic twist when further investigations into Leong's background uncover a startling fact. Leong Suchor has an identical twin brother, also living in Singapore. Police now have to question, who is the man at the ATM?